These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the latest process for playing PS1 games with the Pop Starter method using OPL on your modded PS2, fat or slim, and in my case, I'm using free make boot. So let's get started. It's real simple. The first thing you want to do if you're doing the USB method is make sure you have a USB thumb drive or external hard drive and it's formatted as FAT32. So real quick, if I go to my computer here, I right click, go to format on your thumb drive or USB device, say FAT32, give it a label, say start, and you're good to go. So mine is purely blank and we'll go back to this later on in today's video tutorial. Next thing you want to do is uh, there's a bunch of different files that we're going to need for this tutorial. And let me just showcase them here real quick. First, you need the latest version of OPL. I just happen to be using the latest daily version. So at the time of this video recording, it's a 2019.0104.zip file. Go ahead and download that. Next, you're going to need the latest version of PopStarter if you don't have that already. So that's going to be the PopStarter R13 RIP06. Go ahead and download that as well. Purely optional, if you already know how to convert your bin and queue files from your PS1 game to a VCD, then use whatever program that you like to use. If not, here's a real quick refresher. I have a link in the video description. We're going to use the Q2Pops version 2.3 for today's example, but you can use other programs out there like PSX VCD as another alternative. In addition, purely optional, you don't have to do this, but I like to update my ULaunch ELF to the latest version. So I have a link to the video description if you want to update yours to the latest version as well, but you don't have to if you don't want to, purely optional. And last but not least, I like to use this program called OPL Manager. Um, this is great for getting cover art. And in the future tutorial, we'll use this as well to help with um, the cheats uh, part of it, which will be a, a future tutorial. So purely optional. If you want to use it, download it and follow along. You certainly can, but you don't have to for this particular video tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'll try to break this down as simple as possible. What I have here is I have a PS1 game. Twisted Metal that's been ripped previously through like Image Burn, for example, so that when you rip a PS1 game, it's going to rip it to a Q file and a bin file. Pop Starter does not read those files, it reads VCD files. So using the Q2Pops version 2.3, all you got to do is drag that Q file onto the executable, it's going to do the conversion, and you're going to have this VCD file. Great. So let's go ahead and set up the USB structure. So I'm going to go ahead, right click. I'm, a, I'm going to cut this VCD file, cut it, go to my thumb drive here, make a new folder, and call that Pops. Okay, under Pops, I'm going to paste it, so that's the VCD file. So while that is, go ahead and, and you know copy and paste process going on. What I'm going to do next is set up the rest of my USB structure here. So what we talked about earlier was getting the latest OPL version, so I'm going to go into my zip file here. I'm going to drag out this open PSLD.elf file basically. And what I'm going to do is let me just put that on the root of my USB thumb drive. And later in the video tutorial, I'll show you how to use uh, Freemic Boot, the ULaunch Elf Manager, to copy over the files into the correct spots on your memory card. Okay, so while that is going on, next thing we're going to do is the OPL Manager. So I'm going to right click this to its own folder here. And we'll get back to that in a second uh, pretty shortly here. The next file here is the pops underscore iox.pack. This is a file that you're going to need for the pop starter emulation to work properly off a of USB. Because it is a copyrighted file, I cannot give you the link to download it directly. However, you can use Google and I'm sure you can find it like I did and use it for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to copy this, and then on my USB thumb drive, I'm going to put it under the pops folder like so. Okay, next is the pop starter zip file. So in the pop starter, all we need is the pop starter.elf. Go ahead, take that file, put it on your USB under the pops folder. And then last but not least, this is the one I was talking about, purely optional. I'm going to upgrade or update my ULaunch elf today. So I'm just going to go into that zip file, drag out the boot.elf, and put it on the root of my USB thumb drive. Okay, great. So we got the majority of it done. So to recap, you have a USB thumb drive or USB hard drive. And then on here, you're going to have your pops folder. Inside the pops folder, you're going to have the pops underscore iox.pack, 
popstarter.elf, and then all your VCD games, basically, all inside this one folder. And then in addition, you're going to need the latest version of the Open PS2 loader as well. Um, the Ulaunch Elf, purely optional. And now I'm going to run that uh, OPL Manager program, which is also optional, but I like to do it because I want to get my cover art working uh, to showcase in today's video tutorial. So let's go to LPL Manager version 21.4, run the program, and then it's going to ask you where's the path for your files. So I'm just going to go ahead and navigate straight to my USB thumb drive and say OK to the root, save. It's going to ask you, you know, we don't see these folders. You want to create it? I'm going to say yes, basically. So we're good to go from there. It's going to see there's one bad name ISO. Okay, that's fine. So we're just going to select it and say batch convert VCD naming. Just in case, under mode, I'm going to say USB, start, and we're done. Okay, and then batch actions, art download. Um, I'm just download all this crap here. Say start. It's going to download all the art files for this particular game, which is sort of nice. And it's going to make an art folder and dump all those files into the art folder on the USB thumb drive or USB hard drive. So if I go back to my USB thumb drive right now, here we go back. Oops, let me just go back. So here we go. Art folder has all the cover art. Awesome. And then the pops folder, this is the game I was talking about earlier. It's been renamed properly per the OPL manager uh, scheme there, which is fine. Pops starter.elf pops underscore iox.pack, which I alluded to earlier. And then these two files, the boot.elf, purely optional. This one you definitely need uh, for sure to make sure this, this works properly. At this point in time, you can go ahead and eject your USB thumb drive. And then now let's go ahead, go to my uh, PS2 and show you how this works and get ready for a lot of good times. Let's do this. All right, so let's do this. So here I am running Free McBoot 1.95. Here's my fat PS2. Here's my USB thumb drive that has the PlayStation 1 game that we're gonna showcase for today's tutorial. So let's go into Ulaunch Alpha by pressing X. And although it's purely optional, I'm gonna update my Ulaunch Elf program to the latest version. So let's go to Mass. And I'm gonna press X on boot.elf. You may or may not have this, depending on what you wanna do. And definitely press X on the open PS2 loader. Dot elf, press R1 and select copy with circle. And then what we're going to do is go back to MC0, go to the boot folder, R1, paste with circle. And it's going to overwrite my boot.elf, like I said, purely optional. And then also the open PS2 loader.elf. After that, we're good to go. We can run that the dot elf file directly, open PS2 loader, or if you have a map to your front. A home screen of your free McBoot, you can also run it from there as well when you restart your PS2. In either way, both are good methods. Let's go ahead and run it directly right now. So you know that you have the latest version of OPL. If you see uh, one example is this logo. So that's a good sign. And then you can also press start and you can also go to like about to verify you have the latest version installed. In terms of my settings real quick here, since we're doing a USB method, I basically have USB set to auto, and then hard drive, ethernet, all this stuff. I have it um, on off for my particular setup. PS1 games set to auto, default menu PS1 games, say okay, say save changes. So now, whenever you have a PS1 game, it doesn't matter if it's USB, ethernet, or internal hard drive, all your pop starter PS1 games show up under this tab. If you have a USB, and you play, let's say, PS2 games, PS2 games will populate under this USB tab, but because of Pop Starter, all the Pop Starter games show up under here, which is pretty cool. And I only have one game today, so Trust the Metal, let's go ahead and run that. And we see that the red light is blinking on my USB, so that's where the game is loading for today's uh, tutorial method. The PS2 USB is uh, 1.1 speed, so it's not the fastest, of course. If you don't have a computer nearby to do a network method, if you don't have a network adapter for an internal hard drive on a fat PS2, maybe you don't have a fat PS2, maybe you have a slim PS2, and so maybe USB is your only alternative. Okay, so at least it works. I can't say that every single PS1 game works great. There is a compatibility list on uh, ps2home.com forums, which you can check out as well. Or you can just do a trial and error with your own games.
So real quick, I'm just gonna do a real quick uh, trial here, just so USB users get a flavor for how this works. If you're interested in doing cheats for Pop Starter PS1 games, yes, you can. But I will save that for a future tutorial because it does have a lot of detail with it. So anyways, we see the game works out fine. Like I said, I've not tested every single game out there. So just uh, test whatever favorite game you like to play and see how well it goes. So that is today's video tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions that have come here on the YouTube page, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.